Hi everyone, this video is about a no crank, no start situation on a 2004 Ford Expedition 5.4. I've sort of been through uh, the ringer on diagnosing this and I feel like it's really simple and there's not a video out there on the internet that really addresses uh, the starting circuit in sort of a methodical way that I understand and sort of is easy for folks to get. Uh, a lot of times the manual is uh, unavailable, and even in the manual, some of the wiring diagrams are just a little murky. So I want to kind of make a real simple uh, explanation on the starting circuit. And uh, had this video, I watched this video, uh, it would save me a lot of time and effort. So, uh, okay, let's get started. Okay, so here is the, uh, the a lot of folks have seen this on the internet. This is the uh, wiring diagram of the starting circuit and I've highlighted how the current goes through. Um, and what I'm talking about mainly is related to this uh, fuse box here. So this fuse box is located under the kick plate on the uh, passenger side. Um, plenty of videos on how to take this apart. Uh, the guts of that, of this, looks like this right here. This is all over the internet as well, sort of the fuse diagram on where these fuses are located that's everywhere. And then sort of the wiring uh, harness uh, and how those are uh, set up is here on this drawing. So when I, what, I, what I've been looking for is like this one. See, C270E, C270F, C270J, C270K, C270B. So all of them sort of go in here, which is here, okay? And then the pin number as well is on here. So the most important drawing is this one. So current comes in the top right here, okay? So this is kind of where you start. So this is fuse 102. Fuse 102 is a 30 amp fuse. Okay, where is 102 on here? Let's find 102. Lower right hand corner, 102, boom. This is it right here. So I think we all are familiar with how to check a fuse. Um, I use a fluke uh, multimeter here, uh, this one, uh, or one of the other automotive tools uh, to check the fuse. The, the purpose of this video is not to check fuses, it's just sort of a general, um, general information on the starting circuit that I was not able to find. Okay, so. So what, what happens here? So first, uh, power comes down from here. Okay, we're coming in, in the top. Now we're going straight down. So you can check power on this fuse. Fuse 102, 30 amps. Then uh, this dotted line here is uh, inside the junk junction box. Uh, the outside the dotted line is outside the junction box. So, uh, the point to check for power here is uh, the light green and violet wire on pin four of C270G. So which one is C270G? Let's find it. C270G, this guy right here, C270G. Okay, so the bottom of the two on the side, which is this one, Pin for light green and violet wire. Light green and violet wire. Okay, so then that goes from here to the ignition switch. So now it's still a light green violet wire. Pin four on the ignition switch side. And then it goes through. Uh, here you kind of see, okay, right now it's in lock, but when this uh, goes to start, this completes this circuit. Now we're coming over here and we go out on pin seven, which is blue, light blue, light blue and red. So light blue and red, we're going back to the junction box. You can sit in the driver's seat and I'll show you how to do this in the daylight. It's dark right now, so it's kind of tough. Then up here, we've got red, light blue as well. C270H. So which one is C270H? C270H. 
H here, it is the top one. So that is this guy right here, the top one. So C270H, let's follow it back. Pin 11, red, light blue. So we're gonna check the voltage there. So if you have voltage here with the key, with the key engaged, that means that, uh, or the key turned to the on position, that means that the ignition switch is good. So you're good there. Okay, so now it comes up here and around. And now we're gonna do a loop through the digital transmission range sensor, DTR. So we're coming up here, we're going down, and I, I checked the voltage here too. So this is C270D, which one is C270D? Is this the pink wire? This is the pink wire. C270D is one of these ones in the back, so very difficult to check. So I think a lot of folks just skip that and catch it on the back side. So we're skipping this one. It goes through this DTR, which is sort of in the transmission under the vehicle, then back up, and this tan red wire is accessible. So the tan red one is on C270A. C270A is this one right here, all the way on the left. So that is uh, this one, that one there. So if you have 12 volts here while turning uh, the key, there's a very high likelihood that your control circuit is good. If you have less than 12 volts, like nine volts or something, it's leaking uh, somewhere, you have a voltage drop issue, kind of separate. Anyway, so then this guy here is the starter relay. So this is 86 and 85, 87 and 30. So this, once, once you have power here, uh, it is sending 12 volts down to the starter, and that is what, uh, that is what sort of starts the vehicle. So one sort of easy way to check, like, hey, is my problem in the control circuit or is my problem in the power circuit is to take the starter relay, which is this one right here, that one, okay, starter relay. Usually you go to the uh, uh, fuse box diagram, it's right here, it's this one, okay. That's this one right here. So pull this thing out, give me a second. So pull it out, and if you take a jumper wire, okay, there it is, and you put it right here on this top, here, let me take my pen. If you take that, take that jumper wire and go from here to here, uh, at any time, it, from here to here, jumper wire, and I'll show you what I used, uh, that will cause the vehicle to crank. Uh, if that cranks with the jumper wire from here to here, it is not a sort of uh, battery problem or probably a grounding problem or some big problem with the starter. Uh, it's a problem with what I just went over. So it could be, uh, what could it be? It could be uh, this fuse. It could be this ignition switch. It could be a cut in the wire all the way through here, or it could be this DTR, or neutral switch as a lot of folks call it, or something is not making it from here, down through, around, and up. Um, so there is not a clear video on this on YouTube, I watched all of them, so I just felt like sort of taking the time to explain that to someone uh, is worthwhile. Uh, later tomorrow, I'll go out and show sort of uh, in the car where exactly these are, and so that way you kind of get a better idea of it. All right, thanks, guys. All right, so we just checked this one. This one's good. Now we're coming around here. This guy is the white-pink one. It's on the back side, so I'm going to skip that and go to here. Uh, if we don't have volts here then I'm going to investigate this guy. So this is under the uh, transmission. All right, check this. So we got 12 volts here and 11.8 on this side, 11.8 on that side. So I'm not sure if just the battery is dying slowly or what, but I'm gonna continue. Um, 
so 11.8 here. So now I'm going to check it over here, pin 11 on C270H. So now we're going to follow it around. We checked it here. Now we're going to check it here. Pin 11, C270H. C270H over here is the top one. Let's go find that red wire. Red and light blue. Okay, so here we are. Red and light blue. There it is. I see it. I'm going to touch it right there. Okay, I got the multimeter in there. All right, so now I'm here at the ignition switch looking for that same wire. Uh, I can see it. It is this guy right here. Right there. I'm going to pull this out so you can see it even better. All right, so here we are. We're going to look at the uh, light green and violet first, and then the red and light blue. So here we are. Light green and violet is this one. And red and light blue is this one. So those are the two. Okay. So, All right, so now I put it in the uh, red and light blue wire. Red and light blue. I'm going to jam it in there. Put this uh, voltmeter in there. You can see it's in the light green violet. I'm going to find a ground. There's one. Okay. So what do we got? 12.37. Good. Hey guys, this is, uh, I guess a couple weeks later, I've sort of figured out my problem and I wanted to explain it. And my problem was I had power here, which I most folks say, oh, you're good if there's power here. Uh, but really I had power up here too, for some reason, and it's supposed to be grounding out. Uh, I'll explain it here just in a second, but I had power here and power here, and it was not pulling this in like a relay is supposed to do. It wasn't pulling it in, so 87 would connect. So, uh, just wanted to explain that, and uh, I apologize for my, this is my first YouTube video, if I'm not making much sense, it's, I'm sort of jumping around and my editing is horrible. All right, so here we are. This is the uh, PCM. I had to replace this. Uh, remember that relay I was mentioning earlier? It grounds out here on this wire. Can you see it? It's this one, sort of a uh, turquoise pink maybe. And uh, this guy right here caused all my problems. It's supposed to ground out, but it was sending 12 volts back. It was sending 12 volts back uh, to the relay. Amazing. So there was 12 volts on both sides of the relay and it would not close. So what I did as a test was sort of connect this to a ground. I think I did this one right there. And it started, but then it stopped. So this PCM, which I took off and sort of looked at, it looked a little beat up, it smelled funny, maybe some burning. So I believe, and I ordered one on the internet, it was maybe a couple hundred dollars, came with some keys, uh, installed it, and uh, it fired right up. So I'm going to uh, re-solder this uh, and put it back together. I'm going to use this guy right here, I don't know if you can see it, I bought it on Amazon. We'll see how it works. Alright guys, that's it. That's my first uh, YouTube video ever. and. Uh, I would have never guessed it would be on the starting circuit of a Ford Expedition, but hopefully you found it useful. And uh, best of luck to you and your uh, and your starting circuit issues. I know we all have them. Thanks, guys.